So um, we'll take a look at my rabbits, and maybe by the end of the end of the course, we'll figure out a good way um, to do something with them. I actually have two. Um, my daughter wanted to get one. She could not take it to her apartment because her one aller uh, roommate is allergic. And over the summer, of course, she decided that what's fun is having one bunny. You need two bunnies to keep each other company. So this is the first bunny we got, and this is a Flemish giant, which is, she is much bigger than that now, believe it or not. She's probably another 25% big, bigger. So she's, uh, and she's a baby. She was born like March or February. So they get to be big. Her, her dad or her grandfather, I forget which, was 30 pounds. So she, you know, to the rabbit, I, I, that's what I see. I mean, she is the archetypal rabbit. And um, yeah, the very big ears. That's a very relaxed pose. That means she's very happy when she's like that. Because her ears aren't darting around, you know, because they use that to, they're like little radar dishes, right? They, they move them around to, to pick up the sounds, you know. So she's okay, so she just has her ears facing forward and all that. Now this is the second one we have, which is a dwarf rabbit. And it's a little tiny. And that one is a little bigger now, but not that much. This one doesn't get big at all. So they're buddies. Um, the one, the dwarf, some, I've seen the dwarf sitting on the other rabbit's head like a chair. Uh, and uh, they chase each other. We actually have two cages. Um, my daughter rigged up, we have a big cage like you put a, like a big dog, you know, so she has a lot run around inside. Then we've adjoined a smaller cage to it so they could each have their own rooms if they want. Well, in the small cage most of the time, you know, but it goes really between the two, but so at any rate, that's my bunnies and we need to figure out an app to do for those. We're going to do a little bit of wrapping up on basketball and then we're going to go back into pizza. All right. So basketball and pizza, pretty much my high school years. All right. We're going to do today. So let's look at basketball and I want to point out a couple of things. We're going to look at the team class. I want to point out a couple of things about the team class. First of all, we have a constructor for the team name. All right, so we have, because, you know, the thought, and what constructors do you create? You typically create a constructor if, like, it doesn't even make sense to have one of these without certain attributes. So in this case, it doesn't make sense to talk about a team that doesn't have a team name. All right, there's no such thing as that. You know, it's, it's kind of required. So you can put that in the constructor. And if that's the only constructor, then you have to supply the team when you go and create um, a, an instance of the team class. Now, the other thing we could do was we could create a second constructor that accepted a name and an array list of players. So if we happen to have an array list of players, we could go and we could call that constructor and we could add all the players at once instead of having that one add player method. All right? It would look like this. I'm not going to go ahead and do it, but... Actually, I'm going to do it. I'm just not going to test it. So we'll have an argument for the players, an argument for the team, and we would set the team name to the arg name, and the players list, which is called players equals arg players.
The idea is, again, remember, and we're getting back to this, and, and someone brought a good point, I think, that they said NORAD used um, in that other languages programming class. Creators um, of objects and users or consumers of objects. Um, will do two things. We'll give the users of some flexibility. So you can create the object one of a couple different ways. All right? And you can define if like they're not given. So that comes to constructors, that comes to methods, like overloading methods, where you have the same method with several arguments and, and so on. So a good object creator will give the consumers of their object some choices on how to do things. So same with a couple different signatures. So if you have one piece of information, you can give that. If you have two pieces, you can give that. If you have three pieces, you can give that, and so on. Uh, the other thing the object designer does is it, they protect the work of their object the and accessing through the methods that the creator of the object decides want to leave open to be accessed. All right. The one other thing we want to do with this is we want to check to see so that you couldn't add the same place twice. All right. So teaching here. We're not actually writing a basketball application. So I'm going to take this part away, and then I'm just going to say, "Well, we're done. Walk away from it." All right. Great thing about teaching as opposed to working as a developer. So we can put code in here. Now if we look at the array list, there's a method on the array list that is called contains returns if the list contains the specified element. All right. So, we can use this to return a true or false to say whether they the player's already been added or not. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the add player method to return a boolean instead of returning nothing. And I'm going to assume that we can add them unless we find otherwise. So, I'm going to say Boolean return or Boolean B result equals true. Now, if players contains arg players arg player, that means that they're already on the team. Shouldn't be able to add them again. All right? I think we saw the example last time where we were able to add the same player twice. So if the player's already there, then we can't add them. So we make our result false. Otherwise, we go and add them. And then we return B result. All right. I think that looks right. Let me take a second to stare at it. All right. So let's go and compile this. Or let's, let's go and edit our unit test class to test this. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to try to add player two again. So I'm going to say if t add player two, that returns a boolean. If it returns true, then I'm going to put C 
system out, print ln player added. Otherwise, I'm going to display player not added. And we would hope this to display that the player was not added because player two's already added. Is this line confusing to anyone? If add, if t dot add player p two, that's doing two things. That is calling that function, just like we called it before, but it's including the return value as part of an if statement. Okay, so if that returns a true, that they were added, then that expression evaluates to true, and we print out that the player was added. Otherwise, we print that the player was not added. All right. So this calls the method and uses the result in the if statement. So we would expect it to say system out, or we would expect it to say player not added. So let's go and test this. So I should be able to say Java C unit test dot Java. I'm going to make sure I've saved both of these. And it compiles cleanly. Now if I try to run it, Java unit test tells me that the player was not added all right which is what would expect right because we've already added player 2 to that now here's a plot twist i'm going to play um, i'm going we're going to play what will the computer do all right let's go and change this All right, so I tried to add the P2 object twice, okay? Let's do this. I'm going to create a brand new object called P3 that's the same object as P2. Everything is identical. The name of the player is identical. The number of free throws, field goals, and three-point shots are identical. Is this going to allow me to add P3 or not? Okay. Does everyone agree with that? Well, let's see. player is added. All right. Now, let's make sure we understand that from a pointer perspective. All right. In a pointer perspective, I make these objects, P1, P2, and P3. On the heap, these objects live. So P1 is put in position, is in memory location 100. So the variable P1 has the pointer to the plates on the heap, 100. P2 has 200. P3 has 300, let's say. So all the pointers, uh, the pointers are like that. Okay? So I add this to the team list. So in the players table, I add 100. I add 200. 
I go in to add 300, it looks, see, is that pointer, because remember, when you deal with objects, you're dealing with their pointers. All right? So, if I ask, is this object in there, I am saying, is this pointer in this list of pointers? It isn't, so I can add it. Plot twist number two. What if I do this? <laughs> right, you'll never know. What if I do this? What I did was I put right before the add P3 equals P2. Is that going to add it or not? Exactly. It shouldn't add it because if I do that, I set P3 equal to value of P2. P3 now is 200. This guy appears because no one's pointing to it. This is what the player list looks like. I say, is this object in there? What does that really mean? It means look at the pointer and see is it in the list of pointers. All right. So remember, an array list is a list of object references, or in other words, a list of pointers. So therefore, boom, it's not going to work because that object is in there. All right. And just to prove our point, or not added. All right. I try to bring things like this up because we've explored what pointers are and how they work and how they're different between object references and um, primitives. All right. But I want to make sure you're aware of like all the implications and what that means. And by going over these little examples, I think that 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 will help solidify in your mind how you know what that really means to say we're using an object reference for this. All right. Um, and that you know that has an impact everywhere. That has an impact when we call a function, when we return a value from a function. Just has an impact everywhere. Now the question is. You know I still kind of have a problem because I could enter in duplicate information. Right? How would I handle that? Like, for example, I could add player, I could, I could create two separate objects called LeBron James and add them to the Cleveland Cavaliers list. How would I get a way around with that? Around with that uh, exactly. You'd have to go through and look through each and compare attributes to attributes to make sure it truly was the same person or a different person. This is where I'm walking away from it. All right, we're not actually making a basketball scoring application, so we don't need to worry about dotting the i's and crossing the t's. But yeah, it, that is is what you would have to do if you were concerned with not, you know, the 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 contains works for the object itself, not the values of the attributes. So when we say it's the same object, it means it's the same object in the heap, not two different objects in the heap that happen to have the same values. All right, so that's an important concept to realize. Up next, inheritance. Um, you guys did good on that, by the way. It, it seemed to be clearer than I, I thought there might there could be some confusion. And if there is, I, I can clear it up. I can talk with you individually. But it seems like you had a grasp on how that part worked. All right, inheritance is sometimes called specialization. The idea of specialization is that when you're defining an entity, there could be related entities that are more specialized versions all right, of the original entity. So, for example, in the pizza example, there could be pizzas and there could be stuffed crust pizzas. Right. The one thing you're going to hear me say a lot is I'm going to talk about the ISA test. Now, unlike most of computers, ISA is not an acronym. It is actually the words is. But 
when I start saying ISA real quick, it sounds like I'm saying the ISA test, you know, like IGA or something like that. What is the ISA test? The ISA test is one of the tests for if inheritance is proper or not. And you ask the question, or you make the statement, A is a B. And if that statement is true, then you can inherit A from B. That A is just a, uh, a, um, a specialized type of B. Another way to say it, a more fuller way, would be is a type of, or is a kind of. This isn't an English class, but sometimes depending on the particular classes that you're talking about, one of these ways of wording it sounds better. So if we talk about stuffed crust pizza, is a stuffed crust pizza a pizza? It absolutely is. All right. Is a pizza a stuffed crust pizza? Maybe, maybe not. Therefore, another way to say it is that a stuffed crust pizza is a kind of pizza. A pizza is not a kind of stuffed crust pizza. All right. Now, when I talk about an object-oriented terms that something inherits from something, what it means is it has all the attributes and methods on the superclass. And again, the superclass is what we call the class that's being inherited from. All right. A sub. Go ahead. No, it's probably just a different, different way of phrasing it. Uh, to keep in mind, because you know, you can actually have what I don't like about that is when you talk about a super or subclass, you have to talk about like within a context, right? So, for example, the meat lovers stuffed crust pizza. There could be a meat lover stuffed crust pizza class that inherits from stuffed crust, which inherits from that. So. I can say in a given context, this is a superclass, this is a subclass, but to say this is the base class, I'm iffy about that because it depends where on the chain you are, what you would consider the base. So that's a more relative term, I guess. That's why I prefer sub and superclass. All right? Because really the base class of everything is object, all right, when you get down to it. So there's only one base object, really, and that's object. At any rate, so what it means is that when, I, when we say this is a type of that, it means that this has all the attributes and behaviors of the superclass or the base class, if you will. But two things. It may have some extra attributes and behaviors. And it might do some of the other behaviors differently. All right? So if we are going to, if we're going to talk about in abstract terms, you know, the classic example that people give is living things. If I was making a class for living things, you know, every living thing came into the world at some point, and every living thing is going to leave this world at some point. Boy, that sounds depressing, right? <sighs> now, if I talk about plants and animals, then there's some general statements I can say about animals. Animals and plants are both living things. A plant is a living thing. An animal is a living thing. That means that it gets all the behaviors and attributes of a living thing, but plants have certain behaviors distinct to them, and animals have certain behaviors distinct to them. All right? Then if we qualify it even further under animals, we have fish, birds, reptiles, amphibians, mammals. Well, mammals have all the behaviors of animals, and by implication, all the behaviors of living things. So, but mammals do some things differently than other animals do, and mammals can do certain things differently than, um, can do some new things and can do things differently than other mammals or other animals. So again, 
When you inherit from one class, you get everything that's in that class. You don't have to redefine it. All right. And by everything, I mean attributes and methods. All right. Um, plus, you can do two things. You can add stuff or you can um, modify an existing one. So let's talk about our stuffed pizza. And let's start talking about um, what might be different about a stuffed pizza. Bake time, right? You, you know, bake a stuffed pizza, I assume you would bake longer. So that, pardon me? And might be the cost, too. So those are two things that could be, could have a different set of rules for a, a, a stuffed crust pizza versus a regular pizza. All right? The other stuff, the size, it has in common, right? Whether it's pepperoni or not, it has in common. So set size, get size, get pepperoni, and all that, it has in common. It still has a get bake time method. It just has a different one than a more specialized version. It has a slightly different bake time than a, just a generic pizza. So let's go and let's create our pizza class, or our stuffed crust pizza class. So I'm going to go into Notepad, and I'm going to say, whoops. Good, I'm clicking all over the place anyhow. I'm going to open up the pizza class for comparison. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to say, public class stuffed crust pizza. I'm going to add something. I'm going to add that it inherits from the pizza class. And the way that you express that is it extends pizza. So it's everything that pizza has plus some more stuff. All right? Or a different way to do some of the stuff pizza does. Now, do I have to go and redefine these attributes? Public string size, public boolean B pepperoni. No. Because, because it extends it, it gets those attributes for free. Do I have to redefine, we'll save that. Do I have to redefine get size? No. Size of the pizza is the size of the pizza. Get pepperoni or set pepperoni and get pepperoni. Get cost and get baking time, I do want a different version of them. So in a nutshell, what I'm doing is I'm coding the differences. All right, I'm coding the differences between a stuffed crust pizza and a regular pizza. And for now, we can say that a stuffed crust pizza, the only difference is, is we bake it for longer, and it costs a different amount. So I'm going to go, just for the heck of it, I'm going to copy these just to save me on some typing. And I'm going to say, instead of 6, 8, and 10, let's say it's 8, 11, and 13. Make it 9, 11, and 13. All right. Pepperoni doesn't cost extra, uh, just because of stuffed crust. And the bake time will, will make it, a small will be 11 minutes, a medium will be 15 minutes, and a large will be 22 minutes, or 52 minutes, 22 minutes. Yeah. All right, so we could do that. Now, the one thing we haven't done yet is we haven't 
given stuffed crust pizzas anything extra. And we'll hold off on that for a while. What I mean is, the stuffed crust pizzas could have some extra attributes. What, uh, what would be an example of an attribute that a stuffed crust pizza would have that a regular pizza wouldn't have? Yeah, the type of cheese in the crust, right? You could pick, I don't know, cheddar, mozzarella, provolone, whatever. All right, so, pardon me? Swiss cheese, I suppose, yeah. So it doesn't have that, all right? Marinara sauce, maybe. Garlic butter, whatever. What it's stuffed with is a characteristic of only stuffed crust pizzas. Well, we're going to forget about that for a while. We'll, we'll come back to that, all right? Right now, we're simply overriding the stuff that was in the regular pizza class. So what we've done is we've rewritten the methods that are different. All right? Now, we have one more thing we have to do, and that's the constructors. Constructors don't inherit. So you would need the constructor um, you would need the constructor um, in the subclass as well as the superclass. Now, that's not as bad as it sounds because we're going to do things to start out the roundabout way and then we'll come to do it a shorter way in a, in a minute. All right? And again, that may or may not be today. It depends on the time. So it might not be a minute. It might be a few days. All right? But right now, just for simplicity, I'm going to go in and I'm going to create duplicates of those constructors in the stuffed crust pizza. That's the little Caesars version of it, right? So let's go and let's test this. So I'm going to save this as And let's go and let's edit our test class for this. do that? Pardon me? Actually not. Because why think, think of the pointer as a you know a box that you can put a pizza in. Well, it's a convenient analogy, right? <laughs> you can put a stuffed crust pizza or a regular pizza in a box that's marked for pizzas. All right? So what this is saying is, I need to put some kind of pizza in this pointer. Stuffed crust pizza is a kind of pizza, right? So therefore, I can go and I can create and say, pizza P2 equals new stuffed crust pizza. And that'll work. I can also do it the way that you suggested. <laughs> well, that depends, and we'll, we'll come to this in a second. 
All right. This is getting into the whole notion of polymorphism. And polymorphism, someone I know of Greek descent told me that knowing the Greek language was like a big advantage for them, like in biology classes and medical classes, because all those words come from Greek, right? So polymorphism is another one that comes from Greek, right? Poly means many, morphism means shapes or forms, all right? What does that mean? It means that I can treat a stuffed crust pizza like a stuffed crust pizza, or I can treat it like a pizza, all right? And this will become even cloudier later on, all right? But for now, go and I can do that, and I should get the right value. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. O add the orders P2. What's my order class look like? Oh no. Was that a good, was that a convincing concern? Do we have to revise this? It's still a pizza. A stuffed crust pizza is a kind of pizza. Therefore, wherever a pizza is required, I can put in a stuffed crust pizza. All right. Now, does that mean, since I'm treating it like a pizza, does that mean it's going to calculate the order cost wrong? Going to use the wrong calculation? I sure hope not. All right. It's going to use the right calculation. The idea is, is that an object is an object. When we create an object, we create that object on a heap with all its attributes and methods. The data type that we associate with it, and whether we associate it with the superclass or the subclass, we're still pointing to the same object. So if I pizza, P get total cost, and it happens to be a stuffed crust pizza, it's going to get the stuffed crust pizzas version of the pricing algorithm. Likewise with the bake time. All right? So, these are kind of the things that I think are tough to wrap your head around at first. All right? So, we'll go over several examples of this. This is our first. And we'll see that, amazingly enough, the way that we kind of want it to. Or the way that we would hope for it. Yes? I would word that a little bit differently. I would refer to any object reference that you're talking about. Does that have to be a collection? Can point to objects of that class, or it can point to objects of any of that class's subclasses. Right. Right. So now let's go and, and, and run this. And I don't have to change this, is the good news. Arguments for what? Oh, well remember, we have a constructor that defaults that. We have a, we have a, a default constructor that says if no arguments are given, then we're going to assume it's a medium without pepperoni. All right, and again, whether that's fair or not, well, we did it. So, let's go in and try to compile this. All right, here's our first problem, size in the pizza object. Oh, we made that private. Mm, what does that mean? It means, it means that I cannot share that attribute with any other class, and that includes subclasses. All right, so 
Does this just blow inheritance out of the water? No. All right, we make it protected instead. Private means literally only this class. Protected means this class and its subclasses. I did forget about that. All right, so now it compiles. And if we run this, says that the amount of the order is $32, the bake time is 15 minutes. Let's make sure that that is true. What did we order here? We ordered a medium, a large pepperoni, and a medium stuffed crust. So, Medium stuffed crust without pepperoni should cost $11. A medium regular pizza Cost eight dollars. And a large with pepperoni costs us thirteen dollars. So that looks like thirty two dollars to me. All right, sure enough. What about the bake time? The bake time for the large is twelve, for the medium is ten. What is the bake time for a medium stuffed crust? Probably fifteen. And bingo, it's right. Now, there's one thing I regret doing in this example. Uh, regret's a strong word. It's not like it's going to keep me up tonight or anything. All right, But one thing I'm going to do a little bit different. I'm going to revise the example. I'm going to say the cost doesn't depend on the, on the kind of pizza it is. All right? you, you're charging the same amount for a stuffed crust as we are for a regular crust. After all, we're just shooting in a penny's worth of cheese, all right? so who cares? All right? Now, the bake time matters because you don't want like, you know, you want the cheese to melt, melt it and all that. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to delete this method for calculate cost. All right? So I delete this method for calculating cost. So now when I run this, what will it get? Well, it'll get $8 for the first pizza, because it's the same as a medium without pepperoni, $8 for the second, and 13 for the large with pepperoni, so it should be $29. The point is, because I have not defined a get cost method for a stuffed crust pizza, it gets the, the get cost method from a regular pizza. So that's what I kind of intended to do, or, or I wish I had intended to do that. All right, to show how some of the methods come from one, some of the methods come from another. All right, if a method exists in both classes, well, the subclasses method overrules, because that's a more specialized version, right? Some behavior of humans, some behavior that humans and all mammals share, you know, humans do it a certain way, so if we see a human, we can expect them to do it the human way, not the generic mammal way, or the generic animal way, or the generic living thing way, all right? So, I say get cost, there is no special rule for get cost for stuffed crust pizzas anymore. I said, yeah, let's just charge them the same. It's a hassle. I have to worry about that. The differences doesn't really matter. 
So I eliminated that method. Now when I call get cost, I'm going to get the pizza's get cost method. But I still will get the bake time method on the stuff crust because I still have that method defined on that level. And sure enough, it says $29, so I'm now charging for the stuffed crust piece of the same amount for that. Now what we haven't done, we've extended the pizza class by overriding one of the methods in it. What we're going to do now is we're going to um, extend the class by adding an attribute in methods. So, stuff crust cheats, uh, pizza, one of the things it has that no other pizza has is the kind of the stuffing cheese. All right. And we'll just make that a string. Always is a big word. Yeah, I realize that when I said it, I guess there are certain things that you don't want to. Um, you know, you know, it's it's hard. It's hard for me to think of an example of why I would want to make it private instead of protected. But I'm glad that I could <laughs> if I ever ran into the case. <laughs> right? All right. So you have the flexibility to do it either way. All right, and yes, most of the time it's going to be protected because you're extending the class. You want the subclass to have all the stuff in the in the superclass. But if there's a case where it didn't, then you would have to um, you'd make it private, and then you'd deal with the issues I had some other way other than making it protected. Okay, so I'm going to create a get and set for this. Oh, come on. Pardon me? It does not need an argument. You're right. See, I made typos, but not on the name. So there you go. All right, and this should compile. All right. Now, can I do this? Right, I should have used a smaller name.
Can I do that? Pardon me? I, I didn't hear what anyone said. Yeah. It's a method of stuffed crust pizzas. So absolutely, why not? So, I can do it. I compiled. And we'll, we, we could test it, but trust me on this. <laughs> and we could. All right. And we will next time. Can I do this? No, why not? P1. P1. So there is not a method available on pizza for set five words later. All right. So if I go and compile that, boom, I get an error. There's no method on that. Now, here's the... Here's a question of the day, and I'm not sure if I should tell you the answer or make you live in suspense until Monday. That's a long time till Monday. Will this work? Well, if you're going to take like one sentence I said totally out of context and do that, the answer is no, this will not work. All right? It will not work because we're viewing that as a pizza. The compiler has no idea. We could have a million statements between there and there, and we could change that value of P2 to point to all different kinds of pizzas stuffed crust, Hawaiian, and whatever, by the time it makes it to this statement, now I know I realize there's no code between here and there, but there could be. The compiler doesn't know. All the compiler knows is that there's a pizza in there. So therefore, even though there happens to be a stuffed crust pizza, the compiler doesn't know for sure that it's a stuffed crust pizza. Now, how I did not lie to you is I said if a method is de declared on the subclass and the superclass, it always takes most specific. But it will not take a method that's defined on the subclass that is not defined on the superclass if I treat it like the superclass. So that's a little goofy, a little hard to understand maybe, but we'll continue with this. The other thing you can do, let's, let's go and save it. And sure enough, we get the compile error. All it knows is that P2 is a pizza. So even though it happens to be looking at a stuffed crust pizza right now, you know, it doesn't know if the pizza in that box is a stuffed crust or not. That container, all it knows is that it's a pizza. So I can't ask for the crust, the cheese and the crust. Let me go and set this so we do not get an error. What are we going to do next time? Well, we're going to explore th this again, and we're going to explore it more with more examples and talk through why things work the way that they do. All right. This is one of those things that when you first hear it, I think it takes a while to sink in, and I think it takes you a while to really appreciate some of the um, behaviors of it. But when it does catch in, it, it actually starts to make sense. So I want to make sure you don't just like have the rules memorized, but you understand why things work the way that they do. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to try to get rid of the constructor ugliness. All right? Because we have duplicated code in the constructor. We shouldn't really have to do that. All right? And we're going to add a constructor for the type of cheese in the crust. And we'll see all the problems that that will cause. It will actually will cause problems. It's not going to be that easy to, to add that. All right. So we'll see you up in lab. <laughs>